G'day Makita fans and welcome to another Makita update. Welcome back to the Makita bench and today we've got a bunch of interesting stuff, some really some really thought provoking things, you know, some stuff that's going to get some conversation going down in the comment section, I'm sure. I'm going to start off with a few patents, then we'll jump on to some stuff we've actually got images of that are real, that are tools that are about to be released. And then, wow, well, then that'll be that. Let's start with nailers. How about this? So it's good to see that Makita have been putting out a few patents recently on nailers. There's clearly a fair bit of research and development going into nailers, which is good to see because it needed to. Uh, there's been a few sort of staplers recently, uh, the tacker, the, this is all 40 volt stuff I'm talking about, and the brad nailer, but we need framing nailers and we need some decent brad nailers. We need things like this as well. Is this a concrete nailer? I hear you ask. Well, maybe it is, but when you read the description, it's a bit ambiguous. There's no mention of concrete, but there is mention of wood. So, hmm. if you take a look at the magazine, at the back of the magazine, there's something that looks like, kind of like a wing nut screw type deal. And I'm just wondering if this basically is just a patent for the mechanism for firing the nail and holding the nail in position before it fires and that the magazine is potentially part of it as well in that, maybe, this is just, just throwing it out there, that you can angle the magazine or have it flat. You know, maybe they're trying that out and that that other pin slash nut there on the back would go up and attach to the tool and therefore you could have it on an angle. If you had angled nails, drop it down to the flat if you had straight nails. That would be super handy because occasionally you open a box of nails and you think, oh shit, bought the wrong damn nails, I need to do this job. If you could just adjust your magazine, it would be pretty awesome. Or is there just a piece missing from the patent, a bracket that's going to go from the magazine up onto the tool and it's basically a concrete nailer. It does look like a concrete nailer rather than an adjustable angle. It's certainly something that looks like it's made for short nails, perhaps a metal connector nail, potentially, that, like I say, has that adjustable angle. Who knows? Let me know what you think down there. It does look similar to a Hilti or a Bosch or a DeWalt concrete nailer, the magazine area. So maybe, but patents are often only one little bit. This could relate to a tool that ends up being multiple bits of the images, so you never quite know what you're going to get. Next up, it wouldn't be a Makita update video without an impact driver. So this isn't exactly an impact driver, but more something that goes on the back of your impact driver. And for a change, I don't have an impact driver sitting on the bench to actually show you. But you know what an impact driver looks like, right? So this is 20 different, 20 plus, because it's 20 different things for an impact driver that could also work on an impact wrench or a drill. And these are sort of different attachments that you could put on the back of an impact driver, including bit holders, a dust blower, a counter, that could be quite cool, a whiteboard, <laughs> believe it or not, a post-it note area for like sticking post-it notes, <laughs> a level, so lots of different things. Um, I'm guessing most of these will never happen, but the thing with patents is if you come up with an idea and no one else has come up with it yet and you patent it, you at least stop other people from using it. Or if they do want to use it, you get to make a bunch of money out of it. A lot of patents are just for those sort of reasons. Like for instance, the um, recently, if you watched my Makita, I'll put it up here, the, the Makita Packout style box system, I put the patent over on another channel and that had a heap of different ways of locking them together. And if they've put them all on a patent to try and get them patented, then if they do, it stops anyone else from using all those systems without paying Makita some royalties and or if they steal it, Makita can sue them and that sort of thing. So it's a good way of keeping your competition at bay, making everybody work just that little bit harder. And speaking of those boxes, not too far away from what I hear, got a feeling they're going to be unveiled pretty soon. But back to the impact driver, here's the bit holders. There's a few different shots of those. Uh, they look kind of annoying to be honest. <laughs> the long one would like, you'd end up just knocking that and catching that on things where it is. I don't particularly like that design. Um, the dust blower one's interesting. Like, 
why do you really need that? Um, yeah, when you put screws in, it does make a little bit of dust, I suppose. So if it's blowing the dust away as you're driving your screw in, could be handy. But mm, wouldn't it overheat the tool more, potentially, having it a bit more enclosed like that? Not to mention it makes the tool much bulkier. I'm not so sure about that one. But like I say, if they patent the idea, they don't have to come up with the most beautiful design, but if they patent the idea of it, then they might just get away with stopping anyone else from doing something similar. And a counter on the back, help keep track of how many screws you're putting in, could be handy. Or even if you had a counter on the back that was showing the RPM that the tool was running at maybe, could be quite cool. A whiteboard on the back, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. And levels on the back, well, that's nothing new. Drills used to have those years ago. Uh, I might have one somewhere. Um, I've had lots of different ones over the years that have had levels on the top or levels on the back. So that's nothing new. And speaking of impacts, what about this beast? It's showing up again in another patent. So they keep putting effort into this one. So presumably it will eventuate, hopefully not too far away. There's a lot of tools that are going to be coming out later this year and a lot of things that Makita haven't done before really or haven't done for a while. There's going to be, going to be some good ones. And of course, a lot of those will be on the 40 volt system. So let's get stuck into some tools that I know exist or are about to exist on the 40 volt range. So we have an XGT sweeper up here first, and it is a 40 volt tool. Even though it takes two batteries, it's not an 80 volt tool. It runs off one, and then once that battery is flat, flicks over to the other just like the mowers and the 40 volt vac. It can sweep a path 630 millimeters wide, has a little wheel on the front there, so if you're going along a wall, you can just sort of run it along a wall without crashing into the wall over and over again, keep the right distance away for the bristles and the brushes and everything to sweep everything up. It's got a couple of lights on the front which you can turn on and off. You can even suck bottles up with it. How cool is that? <laughs> it's got a 47 litre bin, which depending on what you're doing, could fill up pretty damn quick. It's got dust filters as well. The brushes can be raised and lowered so you're not wearing out your bristles when you're pushing it around without the tool running. It's IP56 rated and it has the ability to have a Mac pack style attachment put on the back so that you can put a Mac pack on it or better yet a PDC 1200 or 1500 so that you can power this thing for much longer. Although on the standard setting you will get 3 hours and 20 minute runtime on two 8 amp hour batteries. So on a PDC 1500 you'll get a heap. I can't even be bothered working that out of my head right now, but it's quite a lot and it is being rolled out around the world as we speak. It's also a new vac that I just noticed. I'm not sure how long this one's been kicking around for. Not too long because the one before it wasn't too long ago that I did the review and it is the VC007G so it's an L class 80 volt vac so not a 40 volt vac this is like the 06 which I did a while ago which is a wet dry vac and it was an M class so the 06 is an M class the 07 is an L class they seem to have all the same sort of specs in regards to suction and the like but the 07 being an L doesn't need some of the stuff that the M needs but it still does have a thumper by the looks but it doesn't have a dial on the front to change between different hose diameters that you get on the M class model. If you haven't already seen this, this is the HM004G demo hammer that was shown off at World of Concrete um, not so long ago. I did mention it in another video but I just found this photo, thought I'd chuck it up. Another thing I found that was interesting that I hadn't seen or heard of before is the SKR011G rotary laser. Now, I don't have any other information about it apart from the model number and this image. So I can't give you any distances or anything like that. Don't know that yet. This is all I've got to go on. But there is a 40 volt laser coming, so that's good to see. Now, the next two are the most interesting, in my opinion, for this particular video. The first is a series of sanders. Now, I was a little bit confused when I first saw the patent for these sanders because I skipped over it thinking, oh yeah, corded sander, not interested. Not going to fit with my usual videos. I mean, they looked, it looked kind of interesting, it looked like a nice sander, sort of 
looked kind of like they were going for a bit of a, a festool vibe with the way that they had done the a removable cord and I thought oh yeah okay that's interesting another another thing that Makita's you know trying to do I just swept the patent aside didn't bother looking at it and then today I see a bunch of model numbers for sanders 40 volt sanders but the model numbers are a little bit off so the model numbers are BO001 CG through to BO007 CG now seven sanders that's a lot that's pretty cool it's a lot of sanders to pump out are they going to pump them all out at once possibly we'll have to wait and see but the thing is why is there a c with makita 40 volt model numbers the worldwide numbers not the american numbers you have two letters at the front which indicate the name of the tool for instance this when it comes out in 40 volt not too far away will be an mt 001g presumably multi-tool 001 it's the first one and then the next one would be 002 etc and the G stands for the XGT line when it comes to the 18 volt stuff in most of the world they all start with a D in the US they all start with an X so every 40 volt tool has ended with a G so why have these ones got CG so I did some hunting found the images one image of all these sanders together that's all I could find someone tipped me off and I found them and they say they're XGT tools, but there's nowhere to put a battery on them. And they all, if you have a look at this image, have a cord sticking off them. So what's going on here? They're very low profile sanders, which is nice because this one here is a bit high. It's just not that comfortable to use. You want the center of gravity a lot lower. You want your hand down here like you're sanding manually almost. And this shape here, bit square not the most comfortable thing in the world compared to a lot of other sanders a lot of pneumatic sanders and everything very nice to hold nice small fit in the circle fits in the palm of your hand nice and low profile it's a good sort of design whereas that isn't the greatest but you can clip the battery straight on the back nice and easy still a fairly compact unit just a bit tall so these images tiny as they are clearly don't have a battery on they have a dust box on the bottom and they have some form of cord clipped onto the top so is this going to be a cord clipped on the top that then goes into a 40 volt battery are they going to have an adapter that goes onto the battery that you then which they already kind of do have that you then clip onto your belt or you have just sitting on the table next to you while you're sanding or whatever it is you happen to be sanding um, is that what they're doing just so they can keep the tool nice and light and low profile i think maybe they are so maybe cg basically stands for corded xgt now i'm not 100 percent sure on this but i can't see any other way around it if they've got the images with a lead on them but they've got an xgt label on them the cord must be going to a 40 volt battery now the patent doesn't mention anything about batteries it's all just about the sanders and no mention that I can find of where that cord goes to but it clearly clips on and off as well so you could buy the one cord that clips onto your battery and buy multiple sanders and just clip the cord between them like you would with Festool for instance anyway looking at the sanders we've got four random orbital sanders it looks like it's probably going to be a 125 and a 150 and then another 125 and a 150 with AWS that's my guess I can't tell from the images but they definitely look like a 125 and a 150 and the fact that there's two of each and they've got different model numbers leads me to believe that two of them are AWS and two of them aren't and then there is also a quarter sheet sander like that and a detail sander like that and the one that's in the image that is just still a sketch like a patent drawing is one of these a third sheet sander this one was a bit cumbersome with the battery on the top there it's sort of not the most comfortable place to have the battery it's right you want to put your hand on it and it's not the greatest i mean they put a they have a rubber over mold thing you can put over the top of it to make it more comfortable but it's a little bit odd so if they can get this a bit lower a bit lighter have the battery somewhere else maybe that will be a good idea time will tell i'll have to wait and see when those come out but it's something i'm quite intrigued about and interested to see what they've done let me know what you think of that particular idea down in the comments section because have i got that wrong could they be doing something else i 
it just if they're calling them XGT and they've got a cord it's got to be a cord to a battery right whether they will then make other ones with a battery because they could still make one like that that takes these batteries of course but if you want long runtime on a sander you don't want to be putting an 8 amp hour battery on there because well it's basically the same size as the whole sander again the weight not very comfortable particularly if you're sanding above your head or a wall or underneath something you've got to put pressure upwards so having the battery off the tool might be quite a good idea you can have an 8 amp hour hooked up to it it'll run for on an 8 amp hour you probably get a few hours out of it so might be quite a good idea we'll have to wait and see right thumbnail time if you are on the 40 volt system you are no doubt well aware of this battery and this battery these are sort of the two most common ones this came out first followed pretty quickly by this most kits come with these or these all around the world and then recently makita released this if you haven't seen this this is basically this battery on speed so this is an f battery what a company like milwaukee would call high output it is the same amount of runtime as this battery it's a four amp hour battery but it puts out more juice you can get more watts out of this thing this thing will put out 2100 watts max the hell is that whereas this one will put out 1500 watts max this one runs on 21700 cells inside here there's 10 of them and this one has 10 21700 cells as well but they are newer tech and they are tabless cells what are called tabless cells even though they have a lot more tabs in a way than this but anyway if you want to know the full details about all that up there in the top corner down in the description i did a a big long video talking all about that but anyway because they have more tabs than this one they sort of can flow the energy much quicker without restriction so it creates less heat more power can get out of the cells quicker and more effectively than the canon here and you just get a better experience you get a battery that runs cooler so will hopefully run longer overall it drains the battery's cells more efficiently there's not sort of patches left where the chemicals can't react basically and get out through the one tab like you have in these style and every other battery up until sort of this point in history in a power tool and so these tabler cells are great should last longer should be more powerful should be cooler should just be better overall and it definitely is more powerful than this you notice it a lot on certain tools and for a while makita have been saying they're going to do a 2.5 f so this is the 2.5 the new 2.5 f will be 300 watts better than this this is a 1.1 kilowatt that'll be a 1.4 1100 1400 so up to around 30 percent better than this these two this is like i said earlier 2100 watts this one 1500 watts 600 watt difference about 35 percent difference between those so not quite as much with these ones and i thought oh yep they're using finally 18650 cells that are now tabless that's what i thought and then i was looking at the specs and i thought oh yep battery looks the same i will just check go through all the numbers oh yep same watt hours of course 90 watt hours looked at the measurements hang on a minute it's the same length same width they basically can't be any narrower because as you can see that's the width of the rails if they're doing it narrower it's gonna look weird for starters because it's gonna be connected to the tool and then it's gonna have to get narrower would be a bit bizarre so basically they have to all be this wide and they pretty much have to be this long because it's the length of the rail and the connection point on every tool and you need somewhere for your button there so that's basically as short as I can get it that way short as I can get it that way but what about the height could they get that any smaller could they make this a compact battery in height as they do with like a 1.5 and a 2 amp hour battery compared to all the other Makita 18 volt batteries you know they're half the height could they get this lower well not really if they're using cylindrical cells because you know the diameter you've got a stack 10 cells in here takes up a fair bit of room but then I saw in the number that there was a difference and then I looked closely at the image and I could see if we take another look at this one over here there's a difference here where it's screwed together it just looks more obvious there's a there's something going on in this area here 
This one is 65 millimeters high. The new F1, according to what I saw today, might not be accurate. There was a lot of other inaccuracies in this particular document that I saw a hell of a lot. Um, but the new one says 48 mil. That's right, 17 millimeters shorter. Now 17 millimeters isn't a lot, but it's quite a lot on a battery. It's that much. So if you can drop that much, take that whole top section there off, your battery is looking to be much smaller and presumably much lighter. This one, according to the, I need to weigh it again actually, I've forgotten what the weight is. But according to the document I was looking at, these are 710 grams. That's what Makita officially had them at and the new one 660 grams so 50 grams lighter and 17 millimeters shorter something people have been wanting smaller lighter batteries it's not much lighter but it is quite a bit shorter well it must be close to 30 percent shorter so two-thirds the height of this and a little bit <laughs> um so that's that's quite good so how are they doing that they can't be using 18650 cells because they haven't got 17 millimeters of spare space kicking around inside this shell. That would be silly, wouldn't it? So they must be using different tech. And if they're not using cylindrical cells, what are they most likely to be using in the new 2.5 amp hour battery? Has to be pouch cells, doesn't it? So have Makita finally released or are about to release their first pouch cell battery? If so, all you 18 volt fans, this is basically the same size as an 18 volt battery. This is essentially an 18 volt 5 amp hour battery, just wired differently. So instead of the 10 cells being used in two rows of five, it's all being used in series to give us the 36 volts that this needs. But basically the same cells and the roughly the same size battery. This is a little bit chunky, a little bit more solid. But if they can make this a third smaller and a little bit lighter and about, I'm guessing, up to 30% more power, if it's anything like these ones, and those watt numbers that they're giving are correct, then presumably they could chuck those cells into 18 volt batteries. You see where I'm going here? And we could have smaller, more powerful 18 volt LXT batteries, finally. Now I'm not saying they're gonna do that, and I'm not saying I'm right about these definitely having pouch cells in them, but as soon as I get my hands on one, I'll be opening it up pretty damn quick. <laughs> That's for sure. So let me know what you think about that idea and whether that is a bit of a game changer, if that's enough of a reduction in size and weight to make you a bit happier using them on a drill and an impact driver and small tools like a multi-tool, much handier. You know, you don't really wanna be using a nice tool like a multi-tool with something that big on it. Now it'll be great to have a multi-tool on the 40 volt system where you have a battery that's smaller than this on it. Won't that be cool? The 40 volt multi-tool, not too far away either. Expect it to be pretty much a 40 volt version of one of these. And if it has a low profile battery on that, that'll be great. Or will it? <laughs> because we have a few problems here. Well, one problem. See this battery here? If we um, zoom out for a moment, put the other battery on the screen here. We put these two next to each other. You might be able to notice something. The proportions of the batteries, the proportions of the stickers, they look basically the same. What I think we have here is a bit of a typo, a bit of a misunderstanding. If you measure the height of one of these batteries to here, you get 48 millimeters. I've seen tool companies do this before where they measure the battery height to here instead of to the actual top of the battery because they count this as the battery height because this bit's inside the tool. And yeah, I can sort of see an argument there. So often they give this height to the top of the shoulder here and this height to the absolute maximum top of the tool and it seems that someone hasn't done their fact checking too well and they have released the information as this height here rather than the full height of the battery because if you measure to the top of this 65 measure there 48 you know the 17 mil is basically this bit on the top here so we as far as i can tell are not going to be getting pouch cell batteries 
although they could still be using the same size case it does have that slightly different bit on the front they might be using the same size case with pouch cells in it that could be happening but chances are like I said at the very beginning tabless 18650 cells is what I'm putting my money on to be inside these new batteries and that's not a bad thing I'm not saying that oh it's a shame they didn't use pouches the tabless cells that are in this battery are awesome and they run much cooler and everything than the other ones that are in there so it's still a massive step up and depending on how you look at it and how you want to argue things the tabless cells might be better than the pouch cells anyway both of them are fairly new tech in tool batteries so it'll take a while before we know you know whether there's any failures or anything from use over time and this battery with the tabless cells ended up being 70 grams lighter than this original battery so the 50 gram difference between this and the new 2.5 amp hour battery fits pretty much perfectly with just the weight reduction of the new tabless cells so sorry to all you pouch cell fans out there but it is looking like being a battery made from tabless 18650 cells so hopefully we will have one of those in 40 volts soon we'll have one of those in an f battery soon and we'll have a framing nailer soon gonna be another busy year hopefully thanks again for watching please consider liking and subscribing and patreons down there if you want to help me make some videos and see these videos before everybody else and see them without adverts take a look down there at the link for that i'll bung it up there as well if i remember and i also give away tools and other makita related stuff and that each month over there on patreon as well so thanks again for watching and i hope to see you on another makita review pretty darn soon cheers everyone i'm out of here